looked at this guy with the groceries. Before the guy said a word, he said, we don't accept charity and went and slammed the door. Please don't make your family suffer because of your ego. Mm. Ooh, and the veins mm. on the side of my father's face. Ooh. I thought he was going to punch the man's face out. He goes, what's this in a driveway? I'm like, uh, it's my brand new car, Master Sergeant Johnson. He says, exactly. It's a brand new freaking car. Brand new car. So you tell me you don't have any money for Thanksgiving, but you got money for a brand new car? Get your freaking financial priorities in order. And sometimes that's where counseling is so ineffective. When I was going through a divorce, when I was going through bankruptcy, I was talking about, man, my financial habits suck. I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that. So focused on backwards in the past. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zappala here. Hey, Lindsay from Dallas, Texas. And in this video, we have a reaction to Logan Paul's conversation with personal development guru, my favorite, Tony Robbins. This is when I first started in business back in 1998, 1999. I listened to all his cassette tapes. Damn, I just said cassette tapes, didn't I? Yes, Live With Passion was my first series of personal development that I've ever encountered once I decided to go in business. And I used to listen to all this stuff, all those cassette tapes were in my, my 1997 Nissan Maxima. And every time I put a tape in, flipped it out, flipped it out. It was at that decision I said, I'm no longer listening to radio. This is all I'm listening to, to reprogram my brain, to grow as an individual, to grow as an entrepreneur, to grow financially, emotionally, entrepreneurially. Tony Robbins, huge fan of this guy for a very, very long time. By the way, if you guys didn't know this, Anthony Robbins is also kind of in my business because if you look at his last couple books, he actually wrote them about personal finance. If you look at one of his books, which is money, and you look at the Anthony Robbins companies in the back, actually he's got I think about four or five different financial services companies. So if you're ever wondering about what industry to start a business with, especially at the beginning of a recession, in the midst of a recession, consider the money business, the insurance business. So let's take a look here, what Tony Robbins here has to say about his conversation with Logan Paul. I have a feeling, hopefully Logan Paul is listening. I'm experiencing this interview the same way you're watching it with me. I have not pre-watched this before, but my team tells me that he's talking a little bit about focus, control, and about the past, present, and future. Let's take a look. They're happening right now as people are listening and they can test in their own mind if it's true, right? They don't have to believe me. I found these three out because when I was a little kid, I grew up in a pretty tough environment. I had four different fathers and we had never had money even for food. I mean, Thanksgiving with no food and my parents are fighting. And I discovered this because there's a knock on the door. I got younger brother and sister. I'm trying to make sure they don't hear this shit. I go to the door and there's this tall guy there. You know, I was a little kid in those days. He's got two giant bags of groceries. On the ground, he's got an uncooked turkey in a pan. And he goes, is your father here? And I'm like, just one moment, right? And my parents are screaming, saying things that you can never take back. And I'm like, dad, dad, you gotta come open the door, right? And my dad's like, you open it. I said, I did, he said, it's for you. Hmm. Who is it? I don't know. So my dad goes, and I'm sitting like a little kid. I'm just so excited. By the way, Tony Robbins got the best stories, man. What a great storyteller this guy is. If you want to know how to sell, you want to know how to educate, learn how to tell good stories. We're going to have this incredible Thanksgiving dinner. It's going to save our family. Everybody's going to be happy. My dad was not happy when they opened the door. He looked at this guy with the groceries. Before the guy said a word, he said, we don't accept charity. And he went and slammed the door. And the guy's foot had been there. He wasn't trying to. It just bounced off his foot, uh. which made my dad even more pissed. And he goes, sir, sir, I'm just the delivery guy. He said, you know, someone knows you're having a tough time. Everybody has tough times and they want you to have a great Thanksgiving. I'm just delivery. Yeah. My father said, we don't want to save charity. And at this point, the guy had leaned in a little bit. So it hit his shoulder and his foot and bounced out again. So now my dad's getting more mad. And then the guy, who's a palsy guy, even as a kid, I could see it. He saw me standing there. I probably saw it was on my face. Probably he goes, sir, please don't make your family suffer because of your ego. Mm. Ooh. And the veins mm. on the side of my father's face. Ooh. I thought he was going to punch the man's face out. By the way, I think that's something that a lot of people don't do today, which is to call it stupidity. I mean, call it out if you're lacking common sense. A lot of people today are afraid of telling other people common sense. Common sense today isn't necessarily common. And I think more people need to do this. Here, here, here's the thing. I, I'm reminded of a of a Thanksgiving story myself. It was a year, we just came back from the deployment, just had my first kid, and the unit was asking who needs help for Thanksgiving. I raised my hand. Next thing you know, the unit on Thanksgiving day comes around, Master Sergeant Johnson, a couple of his other uh, uh, staff, uh, non-commissioned officers come to my house. I would live on base housing at the time, off Marine Corps Air Station in El Toro, and it came with food. And I remember pa uh, Master Johnson, he pats me on, in the back, said, listen, Sir Paul, I need you to come outside with me to your driveway. So I go outside, I say, hey, thanks for delivering the food, the turkey, family, you know, getting prepared for Thanksgiving now. He goes, what's this in a driveway? I'm like, uh, it's my brand new car, Master Sergeant Johnson. He says, exactly, it's a brand new freaking car. Brand new car. So you tell me, you don't have any money for Thanksgiving, but you got money 
for a brand new car? Get your freaking financial priorities in order. Like, I never thought about it. I said, well, isn't that what every Marine does when they come back from deployment is buy a brand new car? And not thinking at all of the common sense behind the lack of financial priorities. Yet yeah, I'm the one asking for charity. Yet I'm the one asking for free food. Well, I actually had the resources. So I think a lot of people today, they have the resources. You got the YouTube videos, you got the online content to help you out in your financial situation. You have income from your job, you have income from your business, but due to lack of accountability and financial management or, and or education, people screw things up. And don't think that just because you're making $100,000, $200,000 a year that you, you're good to go, or even somewhere even close to that household income wise. Even people today, check out this article, People today making $100,000, $200,000, 58% of people because of inflation are feeling like they're living paycheck to paycheck. So listen, call it out when it needs to be called out. Don't keep it to yourself. I think honesty is what a lot of people need to hear today and not to be so damn sensitive when honesty comes your way. And my father, I don't know what it is. He looked at me, he looked at the man, he took the food, he closed the door, his shoulders dropped, and he walked out of the room. And he left our family about two years later and uh, he's the one who adopted me. Um, I carry his name. I loved him dearly. It was one, oh. I thought it was the worst event in my life. But about, I don't know, a year and a half later, I'm like, kept thinking, like, what made this happen? And it served me because I've used this same set of understandings I'm sharing. Like when 9-11 happened and I got 2,000 people from 50 different countries and people are freaking out, you know, what was happening. And what I really figured out was there's these three decisions. Most decisions are made unconsciously. Mm -hmm. And like 48% of what we do, depending on which doctor you read, is about habit. Correct. So a lot of decisions that you make unconsciously is because how you grew up. Your current programming about finances, your current program about fear and faith, your current program about failure and success. That's upbringing. That's how you grew up. That's your association that you're currently around. So your decisions right away, I don't have the money to do it. Your decisions right away, boom, I'd love to go to this event, but I got to work tomorrow. Right away, man, I, I love to do this, man, but uh, I'm, I'm tired and I want to Netflix and chill, et cetera, et cetera. But instead of saying, let me invest in myself, let me grow. And by the way, on a side note, I'm so glad to see uh, Logan Pauly for at least the first couple of minutes of this clip. He's sitting down and his buddies are sitting down, listening, shutting up, taking all this in. Now, I don't know much about Logan Paul. I know he's an entertainer. I know he's a YouTuber since he was in his uh, early teens, uh, just making a gang of money on YouTube. And uh, salute to this guy. He's obviously living his dream, but I'm also at this moment for the first couple of minutes, I'm actually impressed that he hasn't interrupted Tony Robbins as he's actually seeking wisdom and listen, actually listening to what he has to say. What's great about habit is you don't have to think. What's bad about habit is you don't change, right? And so most people make these decisions unconsciously, but what are they? One, you decide every moment of your life you're making a decision consciously or unconsciously what to focus on. So if you focus on the worst scenario, of course you're gonna feel sick to your stomach, right? And then you find out it's not true and you're fine, right? Focus equals feeling, but there's patterns of focus. So if I asked your audience right now, or all you guys, if, what do you think most people focus on more? What they have or what's missing? What's missing? The latter. What's missing? And including super achievers. Like some of the biggest- By the way, that's exactly where the lack of gratitude comes in. So you're climbing up the ladder of success or the ladder of your, your finances, you're starting to achieve some, uh, uh, some mountains and climb through some valleys up the new mountain, the next evolution of yourself, the next best version of you. Sometimes you don't take the time to say, you know what? Praise the Lord, thank God. Mom, dad, I appreciate everything you've done for me. Sister, cousin, brother, whoever, partner. Thank you for having patience with me. I appreciate where you're at in my life. I'm thankful and I'm grateful for you. And sometimes we forget to do that a large part of our life, which leads to a lot of dissatisfaction. And that's where people are depressed because they're constantly thinking, oh, I'm not having enough, even though they've achieved a lot. They're constantly in a position of lack versus gratitude. Achievers are always focused on what's missing because they're always trying to get to the next level. So what happens? As a result, when you're always focused on what's missing, you cannot sustain happiness. It has nothing to do with how intelligent you are. It's just like software. Mm. So you always look at what's missing so you never feel fulfilled or alive, right? And so you keep being on the hamster wheel trying to do more and it's never enough. That's what people end up being pushing and pushing and pushing and you see them burn out, you have everything and they're miserable. Second pattern. And by the way, we all do both. It's just where do you live more? First one is and most unconscious people focus on what's beliefs, missing. unconscious decisions. Do you think most people focus on what they can or can't control? Probably can't. The latter. Can't, yeah. can't is most people. Now, in my events, when I ask this to 15,000 people, most people focus on what they can control. That's why they're there, right? Yeah. They came to yeah. take control of their body, yeah. their mind, or their business, or whatever, right? But for the average population, and during COVID, there's so much you can't control. It's easy mm. to be focused on what you can't control, right? 
So what do you think happens to somebody who's constantly focusing on what's missing and constantly focusing on what they can't oh, control? Oh, what a great perspective. They're going to be pissed or angry, overwhelmed. Dropping or knowledge. Then add the third one. And there, I gave you a dozen. We'll just do three. What do you think most people spend their time more? The past, the present, or the future? Past. Future? future? Yeah. Probably a mix of the two, past or future. Definitely not the present. Depends on the person. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I, most I, achievers but, focus on the future. You are correct. When I was coming out, out of the military... PTSD, focus on, the, focus on the past, what I went through, what we went through. And sometimes that's where counseling is so ineffective. When I was going through a divorce, when I was going through bankruptcy, I was talking about, man, my financial habits suck. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that. So focused on backwards in the past until I learned to refocus on, boom, what I can control and the financial future that can relay in front of me versus the rocky road that I just went through. I'm curious, at this point right now, for you watching this and seen this for the very first time with me, what have you found yourself, what patterns have you found yourself more into? Unconscious behaviors or conscious? The second one is what you can and can't control. And the third one being past, present, or future. What are you constantly focused in on? And before you answer this question, a proverb just comes to mind, jumps up to me. In Proverbs chapter five, it goes something like this. Let your eyes look straight. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the past for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. See, Proverbs was written by the richest king and wisest king who ever lived, King Solomon. Today, if he was around and alive today, his net worth would be well over $2 trillion. And this is the message he's telling his kids. Focus, focus, keep, walk, keep walking, look to the left and to the right. Don't worry about... Uh, evil, focusing on good and focusing forward and marching forward. Most people who are unhappy and frustrated, which unfortunately is the majority of humans, most people are not happy and thrilled and have a great body and a great relationship. We all can, but very few people do because they're focused on the past and usually they can't change it or they focus on a future that they're concerned about. Mm. Yeah, and either yeah. way, they're stressed. So I ask people, I got you know 20,000 people in the stadium to say, how many of you know somebody who takes antidepressants and they're still depressed. <laughs> oh, and 80, 85% of the hands go up. Yes. You guys know anybody like that? Yeah. But that was us. That was us in the Marine Corps. It was us coming out of a traumatic situation. It's cutting some of my friends growing up, taking all these drugs, and still upset and depressed about their life. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, don't, I don't take any <laughs> antidepressants anymore, but yeah. when I did, I was still completely, yeah. they do nothing. For so, me. so the question is, why is that? Well, on the side, it says create suicidal thoughts. That's a clue, right? But it numbs you, right? That's what it does. Right. It doesn't change the source of the problem, which is you're constantly focusing on what you can't control, what's missing, perhaps the past. Just as three examples. Band-aid over a bullet wound. Exactly right. Oh, that's a good metaphor. I like that. I'll steal that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just like put George full credit. credit. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. The turtleneck Look at the way he's sitting right now. Because I didn't want to disrespect him like this. No, 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 no. It's good. <laughs> I mean, just with the turtleneck and the, like, well, you look so sophisticated. You know, part of the wall. We're not a yeah, it looks like these guys, I don't know uh, who, uh, Logan Paul's friends are, but it looks like they looks like they grew up together. They grew up together, right? Am I right in saying they probably grew up together, having a blast together. It seemed like I got a lot of great relationship and friendship and chemistry together, especially uh, hosting this podcast. But anyway, <clears throat> another um, scripture comes to mind when it focuses on what you need to focus on. It's in Jeremiah. It reads like this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a good future. So in other words, even the big man upstairs, once you lean on him and says, just focus in about the great things that's about to happen in your life. And the saying around our office is like, listen, pray like it's up to God, but work like it's up to you. We're not rappers anymore, guys. Gotta... <laughs> but the point is, when you change those decisions, like the first decision is focus. Then the second decision is, what does it mean? The minute you focus on something, you got to, what does it mean? So you wake up and feel like shit, what does it mean? Well, I effed up last night, or it's the end of the world, like or it doesn't matter, a right? Checkup. The meaning creates your life. But when you said emotional home, what I learned is that people have an emotional home. Like some people, I'm sure you know, no matter what happens, they're pissed off. Or no matter what happens, they're worried. They worry about other people and themselves. Or you know somebody that's not funny, but they think they are. And no matter what happens, they have a good time, right? right. So people have an emotional home. <laughs> it's, like, it's, right 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's like funny here, but that's my career, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're already a billionaire. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go crawl up this little slide. And, uh... <laughs> we have a jetpack for you. <laughs> But my point is, like, if you think... By the way, I just have so much respect for Tony Robbins over his entire career 
is uh, I've built my business and I've constantly listened to his content is, and read his books. I've always constantly seen Tony Robbins recreate himself. I remember over the last 23 years of me being in business, the amount of strategic partnerships that he's created for influencers and in whatever category genre they're in, whether they're uh, conference gurus or in this case, social media gurus or marketing gurus or sales gurus. He's always finding strategic partnerships for him to constantly wrap himself around. And it's so important for uh, anybody that's in business for an extended period of time. If you want to continue to be relevant and you want to continue to grow and prosper, you have to constantly recreate yourself. And just seeing how Tony Robbins has done that over his career, fantastic. I think, you know, God is punishing you. That is why this is happening, which some people do. Or God is challenging me. Or is this a gift from God, this problem? Or is it got nothing to do with God? I'm just a lazy bitch. You know, I'm not doing anything, right? Or is somebody dissing me? Are they disrespecting me? Or are they challenging me? Are they coaching me? Are they loving me? You know, or relationship. Is it the end or the beginning? You think it's the end of relationship, you behave very differently than the beginning relationship. So the meaning- By the way, I've, I realized that in my relationships, the beginning of the relationships is when we actually start having conflict. I don't know about you, what do you think? The beginning of your relationships that you have in your life, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, uh, your friends, your business partners, your, your associates, your colleagues, people that you do anything or spend any great time with on a daily basis. When do you really start building that relationship? When times are good, and so you're a fair weather friend or a fair weather partner, or when things gone wrong, and now you gotta deal with having to dig yourself up out of the bottom and understand that you probably went at each other's throats and didn't read a lot of things. How do you really align yourself in that relationship after you're, you've hurt each other's feelings or attacked each other? There's conflict. Uh, and so one of the things that I'm always uh, drawn to are people that have non-negotiables in their life. So even if we do have conflicts, what are lines that you'll never cross? So that's where I find those, not in good times, but in bad. Things we select change how we feel instantly. Mm -hmm. And because we have habits of meanings, people have habits of emotion where they kind of live. So you see people in some part of the country and you feel for them, like they come by and a cyclone destroys their home or a you know, flood or whatever. And then you see them picking up what's left of their life and you, you pray for them, you care for them. And then three years later it happens again and three years later it happens again and you go like, why don't they move? You yes. know? Because, <laughs> because it's what they know. Right. And we have an emotional home that we rarely move from that we find a way to get back to. Mm. But if you change these three patterns, what you focus on, what things mean, finding empowering meaning, and then what you do is controlled by how you feel. If you're pissed, you're gonna behave differently than if you're feeling good. So those three patterns literally control your life. Most people, those patterns are unconscious, so they keep experiencing life the same way. How do they make- By the way, this is one of the hardest things to have awareness of is when you're actually in the pattern. Okay, so let's say you, you are not aware that you're in the pattern. The second part is, are you pissed? Are you pissed because somebody's exposing the pattern in you? And number three, are you pissed that somebody's holding you accountable to changing your ways if you want your life to improve in that process too as well? So a lot of things to consider when you want to change your life. Listen, if you want to change your life, you got to change your thoughts. You change your thoughts, you change your actions, you change your action, change your results. You change your results, depending on what they are, can either create create of confidence in yourself or worst lack of confidence in yourself but it starts with where thoughts and establishing exposing those positive behaviors that serve you so they make it a conscious action for people watching this when they wake up tomorrow what's an what's the first action they could do tomorrow morning 8 a.m to start renovating their emotional home the first thing they should do is change their physiology because before you try to take control of your mind you take care of your body what a great last point you made there change your physiology because how you feel is how you're going to act and how your body moves. Ever see uh, players out there, so listen man, pick your head up, pick your head up. That's part of physiology because they want to destroy the patterns of behaviors that don't serve a team, especially when they're down. So you ever see that uh, meme where this player, obviously something didn't go right into play and turned around, walked towards the end of the court playing defense again, he put his head down and his player, shorter than him, picks his head back up to change his physiology. You want him to start looking up. Get the play behind you. We need to play defense right now. Let's get the ball back so we can score back on offense. So that being said, guys, I'll let me know your thoughts, your questions. Do you agree with me? Do you don't agree with me? Um, very insightful conversation here with Logan Paul. Uh, the Impulsive Podcast, I believe that's what, that's what it's called. And obviously, personal development guru, Tony Robbins, who's not only helped a lot of people like myself, but also has been amongst kings because he is diligent in his work. He's constantly growing, expanding, and constantly putting himself in a position 
to help and serve other people. And before I let you go, make sure you go to my new book being released called Faith Made Millionaire. So go to website faithmademillionaire.org, go pick up your copy today. That being said, there's two other reaction videos here I'd love for you to check out. And if you got value from this reaction video, please consider hitting like. If you found value from a couple of our other videos and you haven't subscribed yet, and you wanna add a channel to your list, a channel that helps you think like a millionaire, helps you strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire, please consider hitting subscribe. Hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be mighty smart today. Thank <laughs> you.